Your attention, please. Arrival of the Chair of the NATO Military Committee, Admiral Rob Bauer, and the Chief of the Hellenic National Defense General Staff, General Kostadinos Floros. Your attention, please. Arrival of the Deputy Minister of National Defense of the Hellenic Republic, Mr. Nikos Hardalias. Your attention, please. Arrival of the Minister of National Defense of the Hellenic Republic, Mr. Nikolos Panagiotopoulos.
Your attention, please. Arrival of His Excellency, the Deputy Prime Minister, Mr. Panagiotis Pikramenos. Your Excellency, Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of National Defense of the Hellenic Republic, Deputy Minister of National Defense of the Hellenic Republic, Chair of the NATO Military Committee, Chief of the Hellenic National Defense General Staff, Chiefs of Defense, Strategic Commanders of the Allied Command Operations in the Allied Command Transformation, Military Representatives to the NATO Military Committee, Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to the September 2021 NATO Military Committee Conference opening ceremony. Mesdames et Messieurs, bienvenue à la cérémonie d'ouverture de la conférence du Comité Militaire de l'OTAN à Athènes. We are all gathered this evening at the Hellenic Naval Academy, an institution with a history of 176 years. The Academy was established on November 1845 on board a Navy's Corvette, but relocated at shore in 1891 as a result of the generous bequest of our national benefactor, Padelis Vasanis. The administration building overlooking the main square we are now studying on, the Vasanio building, 117 years old, is named after him. The bequest allowed for the construction of the appropriate installations and facilities, most of which still retain the original architectural design, despite the improvements and additions made over time. Since its foundation, the Academy has provided education and training to over 5,000 naval officers, including over 300 naval officers from partner countries. The Chief of the Hellenic National Defense General Staff, General Kostadinos Floros, will now address our distinguished guests. Chief, you are kindly requested to take the floor. Your Excellency, Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of National Defense, Deputy Minister of National Defense, Chair of the Military Committee, Chiefs of Defense, Strategic Commanders, Military Representatives, Distinguished Guests, it is an honor for me and my wife to welcome and host the Chair of the NATO Military Committee, the Chief of Defense of all Member States, the Strategic Commanders and the Military Representatives, along with their spouses and partners, to Athens for the 2021 Conference of the NATO Military Committee. Deputy Prime Minister, Minister and Deputy Minister of National Defense, we immensely value your presence today in the Military Committee Conference opening ceremony. Thank you. This year, the bicentennial of our country's war of independence, it is our privilege to host all our allies in Athens show such a high visibility in so, for such a high visibility event. 
Despite the challenges posed by the pandemic, the full-scale vaccination program in our countries has allowed us to regain access to the public space. It is obviously still not business as usual, but it is a huge progress non nonetheless. Dear all, Greece has been the birthplace of personalities who, from the ancient times, marked the birth and development of science, philosophy, politics, and warfare. They are the one whose work, who, whose work and activities here held a new beginning in Western development and who nowadays enjoy international recognition and esteem. We take pride in our ancient forefathers, but we also take pride in our modern history, achievements, and progress. Since 1952, Greece is a committed and valued member of NATO. Greece has always been supportive of all efforts to preserve the military committee's integrity and role as the primary source of military advice to the Secretary General and the North Atlantic Council. Based on the strategic commander's unique expertise and their valued assessments and recommendations, the military committee has provided unfettered advice concerning all terms in the strategic environment and all the required adaptations of the alliance posture. NATO's strength has always been its ability to sense and understand early enough the shifts in the strategic environment, including the emergence of non-traditional challenges to ally security and then adapt swiftly. Tomorrow, we will have the chance to discuss what we must deliver so that NATO 2030 framework is, impl is implemented in a structured and efficient manner. I'm looking forward to these discussions. It goes without saying that the military committee has a very particular and important role to play. And this is why, especially this period, the Military Committee Conference in Athens is so crucial for the future of the Alliance from a military perspective. Dear colleagues, allow me to say a few words about your spouses and partners who are honoring us with their presence here in Athens. The Military Committee Conference is not only about NATO's core business, it is also about getting to know each other better. It is about familiarizing ourselves with the nation's worldwide general mindset and culture. I hope that the special program we have prepared will pay off in that regard. Let me also express my gratitude to my team, which has been working tirelessly for one year and a half for the success of this conference. I know that the team has subscribed to my quote, Attention to detail makes a difference uh, from the outset, which I hope will have a visible reflection on the entire three-day program. Please note that uh, we are strictly complying with all COVID-19 protocols and regulations on all the events of the three-day program. Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome again all our guests and wish them a wonderful time here in Athens. May, at the end of, our, of your stay, you all discover, discover the, uh, what the French writer and politician André Marlot once said. A hidden Greece exists in the hearts of all people in the West. Thank you very much. The chair of the NATO Military Committee, Admiral Rob Bauer, is now kindly requested to take the floor. Your Excellency, Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of National Defense, Deputy Minister of Defense, Chiefs of Defense, Strategic Commanders, Military Representatives, Distinguished Guests, and last but not least, General Konstantinos Floros. Konstantinos, as you have rightly said, this conference comes at a crucial time for the Alliance. It is up to the military committee to provide the North Atlantic Council with unfettered military advice that ensures NATO's responsiveness, readiness, and reinforcement. NATO must always be ready to expect the unexpected. Recently, I have discovered that, as with so many wisdoms in our daily lives, this mantra can be traced back all the way 
to ancient Greece. It was first stated by the Greek philosopher Heraclitus, who lived 500 years before Christ. He declared that the world is in perpetual change and that we must therefore always be ready to adapt. It was around this time that the concept of democracy was founded here in Athens. Demos referring to the people and kratos to the concept of power. At that time, you were not fully considered to be part of the demos if you had not spent time in military service. In order to live in freedom and decide your own fate, you had to first serve that freedom in the military. And I am tempted to say those were the days. Back then, there was a lance and shield in almost all households to protect the family against enemies. That role was later attributed to national professional armies and armed forces. Nowadays, the people in our countries have something that is even more powerful than that, a political and military alliance of 30 nations. This is something none of our adversaries can achieve. Not only are we stronger in numbers, we also derive strength from our diversity, from our willingness to learn from each other, and our steadfast loyalty. It is a scientific fact that birds fly faster in formation. The larger the flock, the higher the speed. If that is not a metaphor for NATO, I don't know what is. In the year that Greece celebrates the bicentennial of its independence, the country looks forward into the future. Therefore, it is fitting to host this opening ceremony here in the Hellenic Naval Academy, the place where you train young naval cadets to be the leaders of the future. The Greek armed forces are an unmissable link in the chain that forms our alliance. General Floros, you are right. This conference is a perfect opportunity for us all to spend time together and to cement the ties that bind our great band of brothers and sisters. I would like to take this opportunity to thank you and all those in your team for the warm reception you have given us and for the excellent preparations that have gone into this conference. In the end, this meeting is not about all of us. It is about the 3.2 million men and women in uniform who serve our alliance. Nous sommes à leur service comme ils servent notre alliance. We serve them as they serve our alliance and safeguard the freedom of our people. Thank you all. The Minister of National Defense of the Hellenic Republic, Mr. Nikolaos Panagiotopoulos, is now kindly requested to take the floor. Your Excellency, Deputy Prime Minister, Deputy Minister of National Defense, Chair of the Military Committee, Chiefs of Defense, Strategic Commanders, Military Representatives, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests. It is indeed a great honor to welcome you to Greece, to Athens, birthplace cradle of democracy, and to those military thinkers or students of history that delve into ancient military history, and in particular the Peloponnesian War, cradle of one of the oldest multilateral alliances in history. In this, for the 2021 conference of the NATO Military Committee, it is also a great pleasure to host you at this historic building, the premises of the Hellenic Naval Academy, given the great tradition of our Navy since ancient times in Greek history. NATO is founded on our common democratic values and principles and the rule of law. 
More than that, our alliance has always promoted democracy beyond the borders of its member states, and it's still waging the good fight against authoritarianism and populism on a global scale. We also meet here in the year of the bicentennial of the Greek Revolution of 1821, the founding act of the modern Greek state. The spur that drove the Greeks to uprise was above anything else the strong desire for freedom and for those military thinkers or defense analysts that evaluate an army's or a people's propensity to fight, everybody can understand how strong such a statement is in defining the final outcome of this struggle. So had it not been for the determination of the Greek people to fight on in the face of terrible suffering and against overwhelming odds, independence could never have been won. However, let me wonder, isn't freedom the essence of our alliance as well? NATO through the years has been the shield of freedom for its member states and a guardian of freedom in other countries. These principles also are the foundations of the alliance, guiding its actions through time to the benefit of our societies. The same ideals still guide our policies. The same bonds have strengthened defense and security cooperation among Greece and allied nations promoting peace and stability in the Western Balkans, the Eastern Mediterranean, and beyond. However, at present, we stand as allies in front of serious challenges like the recent Taliban takeover in Afghanistan. And as such, serious concerns remain regarding regional stability, wider regional stability, the re-emergence of terrorist hubs, as well as massive migration flows. Concerning our immediate neighborhood, you are aware that Eastern Mediterranean is a region of great strategic importance that offers growing prospects and opportunities for stability, growth, and prosperity, but also presents grave security challenges, threats, and potential instability to its nations of this area and their allies as well. Challenges are covering a wide spectrum and include acts of terrorism, violent extremism, energy security, smuggling, irregular immigration, and human trafficking, which increase overall the regional instability. The failure to cope with these challenges would definitely have a, def a negative impact on the stability and prosperity of the region, while the consequences may spread in the immediate region and beyond. Within this tense environment, Greece is ready for a more significant contribution to the alliance in the years to come occupying an important geostrategic position as a bridge between both the Eastern Mediterranean and North Africa, it can be at the forefront of the Alliance's effort to promote peace, security, democracy, and dialogue in the region. This is because Greece considers itself and is, in fact, a reliable ally capable of building bridges between NATO and the key regional partners. To this end, Greece has recently made significant investment in military equipment in order to strengthen its overall military capabilities, a development that can only have a positive impact on the broader defense and deterrence capability of the alliance. In conclusion, and wishing to emphatically underline the strong bond between Greece and the alliance, I would like to quote the words of Sophocles Venizelos, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Greece back in 1952 during the event of the accession of our country to NATO. We are equally convinced, he said, that the organization of a truly efficient system of collective security constitutes the best means of preserving peace and ensuring justice and liberty in fulfillment of the most ardent aspirations of the Greek nation. Once again, I warmly welcome you, and I wish you a very fruitful interaction during the next few days to the benefit, ultimately, of our great alliance and our countries. Thank you. His Excellency, the Deputy Prime Minister, Mr. Panagiotis Pikramenos, is now kindly requested to take the floor. Dear Minister of National Defense, Deputy Minister of National Defense, Chair of the Military Committee, 
Chiefs of Defense of NATO Member States, Supreme Allied Commander Europe and Supreme Allied Commander Transformation, Military Representatives of the Member States in NATO, Distinguished Members of NATO's Military Authorities, Ladies and Gentlemen. It is really a great pleasure that I join you this evening in the Hellenic Naval Academy for the opening ceremony of NATO's Military Committee Conference 2021 in Chief of Defense format. As Minister Panagiotopoulos and Chief of National Defense General Floros already mentioned, this highly regarded conference coincides with the bicentennial of Greece's War of Independence. This is a unique moment for us to appreciate and honor, once again, the sacrifices made for this country to become an independent European state. What is important is that throughout these last 200 years, despite challenges, and some of them are really extraordinary ones, there was always determination to move forward. Greece's accession to NATO is the first, the other one being our membership to the European Union of two pivotal political developments at post-World War II period. This period let us become an integral part of the Euro-Atlantic community. While Greece has benefited from NATO ascension, my country's considerable forces and infrastructure and her relations with leading partners in North Africa and the Middle East have been a key factor to the overall stability and security of NATO's southern flank. My country substantially contributes to the strengthening of NATO's readiness and responsiveness to the threats and challenges in the 360-degree approach and according to the three core tasks. The June Brussels summit launched a new adaptation process for NATO, which I'm happy to see that takes into account developments that are of concern of the wider international community, such as the effects of the climate change. Ladies and gentlemen, we live in a more unpredictable world where NATO has to face many different threats and challenges at the same time. However, the core task remains the same, and that is to defend and protect all allies close to one billion people and preserve peace. But the way we have to do that and the threats that we are responding to, they have changed and they will... Oh, excuse me. was unpredictable. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we have to protect all allies, close to one billion people, as I said, and preserve peace. But the way we have to do that and the threats we are responding to, they have changed and they will continue to change. And that's and that's why you must agree on an ambitious, forward-looking agenda. Distinguished guests, Greece steadfastly remains a credible pillar for security, cooperation, and reconciliation in this highly unstable environment. The awareness that the principles of the ancient Athenian democracy 
have so much inspired the de democratic culture and the progression of civil liberties in the West is a source of immense pride for all Greece. But we also take pride in the fact that these exact values and principles are solid, are the solid foundation of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. NATO is not just a political military Euro-Atlantic organization, but mainly an alliance of democracies unique in nature and history and a very successful paradigm. Because we share the same values, we are a community of nations serving freedom, democracy, human dignity and human rights. And that's the reason I'm so happy to welcome you and to host you here this evening. So allow me to wish you a pleasant stay and a very successful conference tomorrow. Thank you. The joint military band will now perform the NATO and Greek anthems. Attention. Distinguished guests, Mesdames et Messieurs, this marks the end of the opening ceremony for the NATO Military Committee Conference of 2021. The Greek Chief of Defense and his spouse, Anna Maria, will welcome you on the stairway to the garden. You are all kindly requested to proceed to the garden area for a short reception and the official dinner. The Chiefs of Defense and the Strategic Commanders with their spouses are kindly requested to proceed first. <laughs> 